My name is Ashley Love. And I'm Luke Pelican. We've been together for 11 months, and this story is about taking our first trip together. I'm a videographer, so we were filming. I'm a photographer, so we're shooting. This is the first time we've spent more than three days in a row together, and the cameras are rolling. Yep. So we've got our two top choices. Count of three, did you say them? Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Hawaii. Iceland. We need a towel for. Um, we need a towel. Economy parking is, I think, where I wanted to go. So, cut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So, mission: find a towel. <laughs> we packed two guidebooks, a hand compass, the phrase "Is there any dairy in this?" translated into Icelandic. Six containers of Old Bay for gifts, extra cards, extra batteries, and just about everything in our closets. Landed around 6.30 in the morning local time. With the five hour difference from East Coast that put us feeling like it was about 1.30 in the morning with the whole day ahead of us. Special thanks to Icelandic farm holidays because we'd reserved an inexpensive 4x4 rental car with snow tires and GPS coordinates for a different farm to stay on each of our five nights there. Fueled by a good cup of coffee, we departed Keflavik Airport and got on Route 41. So my first reaction to getting out and on the road and seeing Iceland was sheer awe. But the landscapes were pretty incredible. The waves crashing on rocky beaches, mountains sliding into view and then quickly disappearing behind clouds. It was incredible. Yeah, and our first mission was to find a bonus. We're shopping for, ah. Nice great for just in case gets dinner for the night tomorrow. Right. Because we don't know when we're gonna find another grocery store. They're really spread out from each other. Armed with supplies, we attempted to use the handheld GPS to find our way east, but ended up just using the paper map instead. I mean thank you. And when technology fails and you haven't let the map blow away yet, you must be headed to think there. Luke and I started to call ourselves the drive by shooters. It was a lawyer that made me slightly nervous. <laughs> We were informed that everyone has to see Thinglevir to understand Iceland. It's where Iceland began as a country, and where the North American and Eurasian continental plates are pulling apart by about an inch per year. The park was just majestic. We walked and actually drove around to see different aspects of it. Actually, as we were, <laughs> as we were exiting the park on the road, we encountered this sheepdog running through the countryside, probably after you know, herding a, well, I guess a herd of sheep or something. He was a working dog, and uh, he just he had this big smile on his face. Yeah. It was pretty great. All right, we're nearly home, at least for tonight. Pull up at 690 cell. Yes, because there's not too much sunlight during the day. The sun has this really shallow pattern across the sky where it always feels like it's about four o'clock at night the whole day. And it also means that the sun set is really, really long. Yeah, it's been setting since it got up. Yeah, pretty much. We're just staying on farms each night. Yeah. And we were told renting a car and doing this is the best way. So. Cut. <laughs> you can't just say cut when you don't want things to happen. <laughs> well, one thing that's been amazing is there have been stretches of 20, 30 kilometers that uh, we haven't seen another car. Just being out here in the um, Icelandic wilderness is pretty wild. Hello? Schooly. Schooly. 
I'm filming right now. Okay, well, I'm glad you remembered. <laughs> we just met him. He walked over. Uh, we called the number on the door, and his wife said he's on the room. And we have the whole place to ourselves. Let me show you the place. Yeah. It's so right there. So we were going to try to get online and update you all that we made it to our first place. But we couldn't. So we're switching we to we didn't need technology, priorities. Right. right. We got We're going for the white ale tonight. Yeah. Each of the farms we were assigned was uh, what they called self-catering, meaning we had full use of the kitchens. It also meant foreign buttons and switches, and unfortunately the metric system. You wanna see if um, you can figure out the oven and I can do some of this? Sure. It takes two. <laughs> Apparently you had to start the timer on the oven for it to turn on. Yeah, I wish I had learned that. What time is it? It was tough to get out of bed in the dark. We wanted to be at our first location by sunrise though, so we had till 9.30 to eat breakfast and get the car packed. All the cars were manual. We were pretty crammed in with all the luggage we brought, but the car handled really well, and we grew close to it throughout the journey. We decided I would do all the driving since adding a driver to the rental agreement cost extra. I took on navigating, and we headed northeast toward a famous waterfall called Golfus. It is obvious that it's not possible to wade and Vita above the waterfall, and it is also unlikely that it can be crossed on horseback. Nevertheless, there is a story from the 17th century, said to be true, about the son of a Brotholt farmer who guarded sheep in summer pastures upstream of Vita. On the other side of the river, a girl kept watch over her sheep from Hamarsholt. They kept a keen eye on one another, with Vita between them. Finally, however, the girl asked the boy to wade across to her. He waded into the stream at its shallows and managed to cross the river. Little is known about how the girl responded, except that they married and had many well-respected descendants. Iceland being such a physically and geologically young country, I mean, all land used to look like this, but here you can see it happening, volcanic, shifting, changing, intense heat building up under the surface and erupting high into the air. And geyser had actually been active for, I guess, about 10,000 years. Outside, it was roughly negative three degrees Celsius. So when that hot water hit the frigid air, it made for a heck of a sight. <gasps> so good. So this being our first trip, we'd already started to learn a few things. Next time we need to bring this, do this, or need this became a very common expression. The map we had had all the gas stations marked on it too, and Luke being the responsible man he is, wanted to fill up every time we got to half tank. We got brave at this point and let the little wavy lines on our already worn map lull us toward the highlands. One closed road and one windy gravel road later, waterfalls and mountains led us back to the ring road and to our next farm. So we had an interesting day, didn't we? Yes, we did. <laughs> Luckily, when we were in the airport and we were leaving, we said to each other, I love you no matter what. <laughs> I'll remember that. I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will both do well. Yes. <laughs> I'd never seen the Northern Lights in person. Before turning in for the night, I suggested to Ash that we should check the windows just to make sure we weren't missing it. As it turned out, it was a good thing I did. They were really beautiful, weren't they? they just, I mean, we saw yellow, a little bit of red, yeah, a, a lot of green. Yeah, a lot of green, and it moved too. It was like... Uh, Almost somebody playing the piano along. Right. Like just, it looked like yeah. music being composed in the sky. It's stunning. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. See what comes. Kitchen was dark. The cans of Old Bay we packed made for the perfect way to say, here's a piece of our home for your home to our host as we left each farm. You're beautiful. No sheep to chase around this morning? Oh, go do your 
on our way to Vic to see the famous black sand. The sun is just coming up. What time is it? Nine. It is about 10 to 10. 10 to 10. Waking up with the Icelandic seagulls floating amongst the gaping cliffs and black sand beaches was transformative. It was just an incredible sight. Yeah, and the smell and how it felt. Yeah, the sun coming up over the horizon next to the lighthouse. Yeah, and you could see the lighthouse with mountains right next to it. Yeah, you probably can't hear her, but Ash is somewhere over there telling me to roll because a good wave was coming. Dalshafti. On every map and every sign you see, things aren't necessarily spelled the same way. But this lines up with the map, and the first four letters do too. What you're seeing on the left and right is what we drove through for about 40 minutes. There was nothing but this on either side for seemingly miles. <laughs> Like tonight. Really? Yes, Ooh. I think so. Wonderful. It's cloudy. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So we just checked in. Pretty nice place. So we're gonna go up there. Yep. Each night we were getting better and better at looking at the footage we were capturing and planning out the next day. I packed my laptop so we could actually keep an eye out on the uh, poisonous gas cloud from the volcano and check the daily solar activity forecast just because that was a pretty good indicator of when we'd see the northern lights again. But that was actually our first night with some good company. Yeah. We'd opened our bottle of Icelandic schnapps, purchased from the airport duty-free, where it's half the price is on the outside of the airport, and we decided to share it with our newly arrived pair of French girls. Ready? So, uh, what do you say when you cheers? And uh, santé. Santé? Santé. Santé. Cheers. Okay, like this? Yep. Okay. Here we go. the stars and yeah. <laughs> 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 
All right, we're leaving our, this is the farthest east that we will see. But we are headed to a glacier. We'll climb all over it. And it feels kind of warm from this morning. I said that and then look at the uh, dashboard and it's negative three Celsius right now. So, <laughs> I'm just letting this guy go. Let's take the passes. Okay, go ahead, Excuse buddy. Excuse me. <laughs> a long windy gravelly road which we were instructed to go to the end of to get to drum roll our glacier walk Help me out. I'll uh, leave that out another way to see Iceland is to get on a big tour bus one of those was showing up to the glacier so the guide wanted to get us fitted with all our kit before all that confusion broke loose we needed clampons ice picks helmets and harnesses Twenty people with me and Yamne, and then ten people are going to go with um, Matteo. Oh my God, sorry. Walking this glacier was an experience, and actually a good workout too. We opted to go with the advanced group that covered more ground but at a quicker pace. This also meant, though, that we had to be careful that we were seeing as much of it through our eyes as we were through the viewfinders on our phone and cameras. I think we struck the right balance. I think we did too. So, yeah, before we were in the cave, and um, this is uh, one of the other uh, shape that the water can matter on the glacier. They are called glacier mills in an uh, English way. Yeah, they are like really big old. During the summer, there is like a waterfall falling in, and they can be 30, 40 meters deep. In Icelandic, they are called svelkur, that means uh, something like uh, yeah, sink in, in English, but the funny way is that they mean something that something but also someone that can drink water but also beer with never ending. Mm -hmm. So, they, yeah, they mean sink but also uh, drunk. So, yeah, you can say it's very good too. But, right. <laughs> Glacier Walk left us with sore feet but a new appreciation for ice. We found Vatten Schult by the light of a sunset that lasted two and a half hours and quickly made haste to get to food. So we drove into this fishing town and found the restaurant. The server, who I think was on her own that night, sat us in a back corner. Ash was not having it. She didn't like <laughs> mm -hmm. the artwork or just not being able to really sort of experience the restaurant fully. We ended up moving and sat near a couple of locals. We had a great conversation, and we planned to meet up the next day with them. Okay, point taken. Yeah. Sun's coming up over the horizon. We just came inside the other building. Come down here to the restaurant. We found some fellow DCers at breakfast who told us about a fox that hangs out around the property. This fox was injured a few years ago and the farm owners nursed it back to health and now it thinks it's just one of the dogs. Luckily it greeted us right after we walked out of the restaurant. The country that doesn't have Yeah, Bunschelt also had actual dogs, roosters, goats, a raven, and horses. Smaller, tougher, thicker, stiffer versions than what we're used to in yeah. North America. Yeah, they sort of just stood there and stared at you. They were good at staring and standing. Well, they are. Yeah. Uh, we were driving back to our place at Cell, and Ash saw a bunch of horses sort of pairing off into couples, and so we got some nice couple shots. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I guess Vattenschuld sort of had the most hotel feel to it, don't you think? True. I mean, it was just, uh, I mean, it was nice, a great place, but, you know, it also had the biggest working farm that we got to see, and I think that was the most animals we saw on our entire trip. Mm -hmm. It's pretty mind-blowing. Oh, they're very interested in that. <laughs> what do I have? We packed up the car. Who's we? Uh, okay, yeah, Luke packed up the car one last time, and we headed even farther west, back to civilization, back to Reykjavik. There's lots of cars everywhere. I went 41 towards Reykjavik. Yeah, 41. I think this is the 
this is it. 41. 41. Thank you. That's, yeah, break it back. We needed to ask for directions a few times. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. So we just decided to park and search on foot. Have it? Yeah. Watch it. Watch it on the right. Perfect. Yeah, I think so. We found it. <laughs> we drew X's. We have maps. We have books. We found it. We also have like a free wife. We're gonna be carrying a lot of bags up here. I love you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Filming the trip a bit. Oh wow, this is beautiful. This is wonderful. Oh wow. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Like mm -hmm. oh, let's go explore. Well, let, <laughs> let me carry up all our bags oh, right. first, and, and then, then we'll we'll explore. We just returned our beloved car. It got us around this country safely, soundly. She did us proud. Dropped her off at your car in Reykjavik somewhere. So now we're gonna get back to our hotel by walking. restaurant last night and we said hey! let's meet up and they came to pick us up let's do it <laughs> thanks honestly when uh, Reagan and Alex showed up to pick us up in their SUV and uh, drive us around town we were both running through escape plans as to what would happen if they were actually trying to kidnap us well we thought about kidnapping you but we figured ice cream was a better plan it's called the gumbly Ishi. And it is legendary. It is delicious. I've had it since I was one years old, and I fell in love with it. Thank you. The new ice cream is overrated, and everyone in the world should have old ice cream. Mm. Good, huh? <laughs> so good. Oh. Mm. <laughs> that is so good. You have to try this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the pearl for decades has been made for hot storage water tanks. And in 1992, David Otson decided to make the pearl. And in Icelandic, it's translated into Pertlan. And once you get on the deck, the viewing deck, and basically, yeah, Iceland is in the viewing deck of the Pertlan. We got back into the downtown and did some Christmas shopping, bought some local music, and uh, then went out to one of the uh, Alex and Reagan's favorite watering holes, the Laundromat Cafe. This place looked pretty cool, it had some good uh, pop culture in it. And when Hamigan Vera Hamigusen, or never ending. Basically means I wish you the best of luck, love, and freedom, and have never ending happiness in Icelandic. So we had a great meal and uh, awoke the next morning in Iceland for our last last day there. We grabbed a quick breakfast and got back to the apartment to pack. In the midst of sorting through luggage and equipment, making sure we weren't forgetting anything, and also trying to figure out our next adventure, I asked Ashley to marry me. 
Mm -hmm. He was down on one knee and I could barely see through my eyes because they were getting watered up and I couldn't wait for it to be my turn so that I could say yes. <laughs> to sum up, I mean, just go to Iceland. It has the friendliest people, wonderful food. Good beer and that lamb was just outstanding. Yeah, and it's really easy to get lost and found again. <laughs> Heck of a trip. Thank you very much for the ride. Thank you. As for Luke and I, I would call it a great success in our relationship. Apparently, everything went smoothly enough for him to want to spend the rest of his life with me. Well, I do promise never to crawl and then fall into a ditch in the <laughs> oh dark gosh. without a light. You almost gave me a heart attack. And I promise always to check the wind direction before opening the car door. I think you did give me a heart attack. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to having one answer when people ask us where home is. Oh, you're my home? You're my home.